Right, today we're going to uh, look at uh, one of your homework or one of your assignment. Uh, today we're going to look at um, modeling a flow through a polos media. So why do we need um, to look into this kind of case? Because um, previously we learned about the combustion process and also um, we have gone through a few cycle of simulation where we consider pollutant right, or the site chemical products from the combustion. Previous example, we look at methane plus air and then we also uh, simulating the NOx products. So in order to counter or to solve the pollutants problems, we will mount some catalytic uh, converter on our combustor. All right. So today we'll look at the solution to reduce or to filter up the pollutant, for example, our carbon monoxide or carbon uh, nitrogen oxide, NOx, or any unburned carbon hydrocarbon fuel. All right. So um, all this is just uh, some introduction on why we are simulating a catalytic uh, com converter for combustor. Um, so today we are going to look at a few things. Um, before that, uh, get ready your ANSYS. You need to open up your ANSYS. Um, then we will uh, continue with today's um, uh, lecture. So uh, what we're going to cover today, we were going to set up a porous zone for the substract. And then we're going to analyze the solution of the, work, uh, the gas flow. And in the post-processing process, we're going to plot pressure and velocity distribution inside the geometry. Then after that, we will determine the pressure drop, what happened to the uh, non-uniform uh, flow inside the cross-section using XY plot uh, and numerical reports. So this is the model that we're going to use for today's example. So the inlet will come in from the left and then you go in to the subtract here. So our subtract here is having a porous uh, surface where we expect we will generating a uniform flow through this section. And we are using a nitrogen flow to flow from inlet with the velocity of 22.6. Now remember this number, later we, we, will, we will key in this number, 22.6 for our inlet. And then um, our ceramic uh, monolithic subtract is in the middle here with a square shape channel and acid through the acid here at a certain angle. All right. So again, remember the uniform flow uh, from inlet, the magnitude is 22.6 meter per second. And we are using nitrogen gas uh, to, uh, from inlet. Yeah? Um, and the rest you can read from the slides later on. Okay, so I want you to go to um, Moodle and then download the file, Catalytic Converter Mesh file from Moodle. I'm going to stop sharing my screen and you're going to share your screen. Yeah, Pidiba, please share your screen. Okay, just for record, those uh, watching this video, if uh, you can fast forward to the next uh, video um, when these students are ready for the uh, screen to pop up.
Please share your screen. Okay, thank you. <coughs> you download the file already, right? Yeah. Okay. Now I want you to uh, open up Fluent. Okay. And load. Uh, we are using uh, double precision. And uh, we're going to simulate 3D, 3D file. Yeah, where does it? I need to. Uh, the name is Porus. Uh, Porus, yeah, Porus Media. Okay, sir. Yep. Then click OK. After that, read the from, uh, import import the mesh file. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> the mesh file should have a name catalytic catal catalytic converter dot mesh file. Then you'll see something on the window one there. All right. So uh, before we move forward, um, can you hide? There's a Microsoft, a uh, Team Microsoft screen there. Just click the hide. Okay. All right. So as you can see here, uh, there's a reason why just now we set up the 3D uh, simulation in the Fluent just now. We're having a 3D model. So uh, go ahead and check the mesh. Uh, open up your console. So what we are checking uh, every time we click check what we're going to look at. Minimum volume. Yeah, so minimum volume must be? Positive. Positive. So in this case, we have a positive value. All right. So then we're going to... Um, so before that, you roll up a little bit on the console. When you read the file, it will tell you how many cells is there. Uh, up a little bit. On the console information, yeah, down, 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 down a little bit. Uh, move down a little bit. So you see, there's a three seven nine nine six node, and then you are having uh, two nine two nine two six zero hexahedral cells, and also five thousand mm -hmm. uh, at another zone. So you have uh, um, uh, about about 34,000 34, uh, cell there. So um, when you make a report uh, or generating a mesh, um, you should also mention to the uh, user that what kind of uh, mesh that you're using. So in this case, the 3D model is using a hexahedral cells uh, meshing in the process. Um, and you roll down, there are some information that you can see. Roll down the console information. Can you roll down? Yeah. 
Okay. And That's all. Yeah, okay. <coughs> so um, after that, we're going to scale the domain, scale the, the, the mesh file, because we are creating in MM. So the mesh was created in MM. We're going to convert. Okay, and then on the right hand side, right hand side, there's a mesh was created there. So you need to select MM. All right, then click scale. Okay, so uh, no, you are, you need to, you, you need to redo it because uh, you already clicked two times of scale, meaning you scale it in MM, then you scale it another time, means you, you scale it in a micro scale already. You understand? I understand, sir. Yeah, so uh, you need to close the whole thing, redo the whole thing. Close and then uh, load the file again, uh, do the whole thing again. Close you your mean, phone. Yeah, means everything. You have to redo everything. Okay, go to setup again and load the file again. Repeat the checking procedure. Uh, click on the graphic, make sure you are seeing the mesh form. Um, no, the the scale is uh, wrong already. Um, so is this you have to change this? Uh? No, just now you already scaled the file and the the x max the x max should mm -hmm. x max mm should be two hundred seventy six. Um. Okay. You need to uh, delete your projects and start new new ANSYS because the, the project file already saved into the project file already. Uh, so I cancel everything also? Yeah, cancel everything. Okay. So I need to redo again that thing. Yeah. You just delete the projects, yeah. Go to the yeah, delete. I do Check the mesh. Okay. Scale the 
scale the mesh. All right, go and uh, change the scale. Yeah. And view length unit in MM. Don't, 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 don't. You understand when every time you click the scale, what does it do? It changes. Yeah. So okay. you scale it double time means every 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 mesh that you see in a window there. Mm -mm. It's now scale it becomes, again and again. Yeah. You scale one time, it become mm. You scale one okay. time, it become micro ten minus six mm. Uh, oh. 10, mi ten minus six meter. You so click the, no you uh you click on scale e oh, okay then click close check the mess again okay. what do you what do you what are you checking checking the skin sir. yeah what what do you see Okay. What are you checking? So okay, x coordinate two point seven six. What what is the what is the main main idea? You click the button check. Uh, to see the minimum volumes. Yeah. So, <coughs> what is the what is the minimum volume? What? Uh. It's in positive. Okay. So is this positive value? Yeah. Okay. Right. Then the next steps we go to uh, general setup. You go to uh, setup there, and then um, we are using the the state steady uh, steady time and then the pressure base uh, solver. So we will retain the default setting. Next, we're going to uh, set up the model. So we're going to use a K epsilon model. K epsilon model. All right, then the rest we just uh, keep default in this. Uh, uh, because uh, from here, if you see that uh, under K epsilon, uh, we will use a standard K epsilon model and also the near wall treatment, we use a standard wall friction for this case. All right, click OK. So something changed to the tree there. Uh, under the tree there, just now lamina changed to viscous and it's showing a standard K epsilon and standard wall function. Next, we're going to uh, define the material. So we need to add, if you open up the material, uh, close your model, uh, open up the material. So here you see, even you expand the fluid and, and, and solid there. We only see air and aluminium. We are not going to use this one. We're going to use nitrogen. So we need to add nitrogen into the material here. So you go to um, ribbon up there. You go to ribbon up there, set up domain, uh, also not sort, set up physics, click the material and then create. There's a material there uh, on the third icon there. Material, you see materials. Yeah. So after that, you need to click the flown database on the right hand side. And then go and find nitrogen. Then click copy. Close the window, close this one. Then outside here, click uh, change or create. Then close. So this is how you import uh, nitrogen. Okay, so of course for your uh, coming test or exam uh, or assignment, um, we're going to ask you to import a different material inside there. Right, the next one, um, we already done uh, import the material because our nitrogen will coming in from the left 
and we're going to set up our cell zone condition. So you can uh, minimize the material and then go to cell zone condition. Then uh, we need to uh, set up the fluid and substance here. So go to fluid, right click, edit. Then from here, um, the fluent here, um, what do you think you need to change? Mm, nitrogen. Okay, correct. Change to nitrogen. And then uh, the rest will be default. Then just click OK. Just click OK after you define the fluid is uh, nitrogen. Then we go to substance, edit the substance. In the substance, we are going to uh, hold on. Eh? Yeah, correct. So go to uh, material name. Um, you need to change to nitrogen. Yeah, select nitrogen. And then you need to, uh, in the, there are seven box there. We are simulating a porous zone. So activate the porous zone. In the there's a small box there, right? There are seven pop, uh, activate for a stone, and uh, also we uh, we also define that uh, the flow inside the substrate or our catalyst there is a lamina zone, so we need to activate the lamina zone also. And um, in the in the below the 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 window there. Uh, just now, before you activate the porous zone, the porous zone is in grey colour. Now the porous zone is activated. Go to the porous zone there. Click the porous zone tab. Alright, so here, uh, you need to change some of the, uh, the value there. So, um, you have uh, direction 1 vector, direction 2 vector. Mm. Roll down a little bit. What do you see? Okay, you have uh, inertial and viscosity resistant and what else? Roll down. Try to see what, what you have there. All right, so roll up a little bit. So there's a direction one and direction two up there. For direction one vector, We are looking at direction one vector. Just now there's a window, there's a table for direction one vector and direction two vector. Grow up a little bit for the porous zone. You need to roll up the porous zone window. Hello, sir. Yeah. Oh, sorry, sir. I accidentally off my mic, the my my one, the other one application. Okay, sir. Continue, sir. Roll up the uh, window. Uh, and you what you can see here? Are you seeing? You can see the um, uh, direction one vector, direction two vector. Okay, so uh, make sure the direction one will be x zero zero. Means uh, direction one is uh, x is one. No, x is one. Y is zero. Z is zero. 
Okay, so the uh, the meaning when we put x one means the the vector is is flowing in x direction, and there is no vector in y. There is no vector in z. All right, and for direction two, you can see that direct for direction two, uh, you're activating the y direction. Yeah. Okay, then the next one we're going to look at um, your viscous resistance and initial resistance. All right. Now for viscous, uh, for viscous resistance, you need to change the number for direction one, two, three. So for direction number one, for viscous resistance, you need to change to. I'm talking about resist viscous resistance direction one. Change to number three point eight four six three point eight four six E plus zero seven plus zero seven. Yeah. So copy this number for direction two and direction three. You can just use your keyboard, Control C, Control V, if you want. All right. Now this is a viscous resistance for um, the flow, and this number you can get it from a uh, handbook for porous material, and or any experimental data. Then for initial uh, resistance, so initial resistance you need to key in some number there. So for your initial resistance, direction one, you key in two zero point four one four. Repeat the same number for direction two, direction three. Sorry, for direction two, the number is Two zero four one four. Yeah, uh, and then for direction three is two zero four one four. And for uh, back up there a little bit, just now uh, I asked you to copy the number, right? So for direction two is e ten power uh, e plus ten, not seven. Direction two is E plus ten, one zero. Same for direction three. Direction three also uh, plus one zero. Okay, all this number looks uh, fine. Okay. Um, so you can see uh, direction two and direction three uh, is quite bigger compared to direction one. The the, the value is several orders of magnitude right, greater than direction one. Right, you can see there. So uh, direction one is E plus 0 0.7 for viscous resistance, while for direction two and three for the viscous resistance, you can see that is a 10 power, 10 power, 10 power 10. Huh? E plus 10 is 10 power 10. While for the initial resistance, Direction one is only have 20 uh, over meter. Uh, however, for direction two and three, you have uh, uh, 20,000 uh, over meter. Then click OK. Okay. So uh, for porous material, uh, we do some setup there. We set up the fluid, we set up the substrate, and under substrate, we're activating the porous zone and also laminar zone. And then uh, under porous zone just now, we change the, uh, we, 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 we make some changes to the principal direction vector and also uh, for the viscous and initial resistance. So this is uh, the main parameter that we changes for a porous media uh, simulation. Uh, the next one, after we're done for uh, cell zone condition, we go for boundary condition. So we open up the boundary condition, uh, then edit the inlet uh, component. 
edit the inlet component. So from here, the velocity from inlet is 22.6 meter per second. And then uh, for the turbulence model that you use for inlet, we're going to use the intensity and hydraulic diameter. And the turbulent intensity we set to 10. And if you do the calculation, the diameter for hydraulic diameter inlet there will be same as your inlet diameter will be with is 42 mm. OK, then uh, click OK. So we are done for uh, inlet. The next one we set up for outlet. So go and outlet edit. So for here, um, you will see that um, the catch pressure is zero. What does it mean by zero? You understand? Why every time we set catch pressure equal to zero, what does it mean? We see the catch pressure, Pascal zero value there. Yeah, what does it mean? When you study about fluid, fluid mechanics, fluid mechanics or fluid dynamics, when you do analysis, when you put catch pressure equals zero, what does it mean to the surface? You are thinking or you are not, you do not know what, what is the answer or you, you don't understand what I'm asking. What is zero gauge pressure zero what mean? Do you understand? Can you hear me? Can you hear my question? Pridiba, are you there? Oh, okay, sir. Uh, sir. Hello, sir. Yeah. Sorry, sir. I muted. I was talking, but uh, it is muted. Okay. Uh, gauge pressure meaning uh, it it uh, it's like something like atmospheric pressure that we can control the pressure. Okay. Uh, you you mentioned some of the answer. So uh, when we have the surface, in this case, the outlet, the gas pressure is zero. It just means that the surface is exposed to atmospheric pressure. It means it's just discharged to the atmosphere. Yes, sir. Understand? Yeah. Yes. So um, again, we need to set up the turbulence uh, model inside there, the method. We need to... Um, We need to change the turbulent method to a to a hydraulic diameter. Intensity we remain as five. Uh, for the backflow hydraulic diameter is for is the same as your inlet just now. Same same like your inlet uh, diameter. You still remember what is the value? All right. Then after that, click OK. The next one, we're going to, um, you look at the subtract. What is the setting over there? Open up the subtract for boundary condition. Open up the subtract. OK, 
Okay, so in here, what does it, uh, by default, what does it set for you? What do you understand from this window? I can't hear you. Uh, it's in a stationary wall, sir. It's not, it's on, it's station, uh, basically it's not moving. Okay, good. Okay. Right, the next one will be what happened to your wall. Go and check the setting for the wall. I mean your boundary condition for wall. So close, huh? Yeah. Just click OK. All right. Wall, what happened to your wall? Wall. Okay, so again, you can see that the wall here is also stationary. It is correct, yeah? All right, so, um, all right, so we have done for the boundary condition. And click OK, we go to solution. Then we need to define our method for our solution. So we're going to use a coupled scheme for pressure velocity coupling, we use a coupled, coupled scheme. And then for, uh, as you can see there, the spatial uh, is patient there. We use square, least square cell base. Uh, we will use the default setting. And also the gradient, uh, yeah. Only thing we, we will use, uh, let me see. Here. Um, yeah, the rest I think we use the same one. Or you can see there, you uh, the pressure is in second order, momentum second order. Turbulent kinetic energy in this case we will remain as first order. So of course, if you want to look at uh, kinetic energy, then you increase to second order, right? So we in this case we activated the pseudo transient calculation for us. There's a pseudo transient activated it. Go and click the pseudo transient. All right, then you are fine for the method already. The next one is going to uh, uh, plot the mass flow rate at the outlet. We're going to enable a plotting for our mass flow rate. So we need to go to solving. Uh, go to the up there, uh, the, the ribbon up there. So this one, just leave it. What? Yeah, yeah, so just leave it. We, we only need to activate the pseudo transient. Okay. And after that, go to solving and then uh, go to report and we give definition, new definition. New definition, we're going to look at surface report and uh, mass flow rate. So uh, what we are trying to do now is uh, we want to see the mass flow rate uh, plotting in our window there at our outlet. So that's why we call out the computer to set up the report for us. So the the, the name there, we just change it to uh, surface monitor one. It's a monitor report for us. Surface uh, monitor one, right? And then uh, report type is mass flow rate, which is correct. And then for the surface that you're going to watch out for this uh, report, you focus on the outlet. So activate or uh, click the surface uh, choose outlet. Okay, and uh, on the left hand side, you see created report file, plot file, uh, 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 activate the report file and plot. And then also print to console. So once you activated these three, it means that you will save the the raw file for you so you can extract it later on. Uh, print to console means the information will be uh, appeared in a console later on once you run the, uh, the simulation. Um, then after that, you understand uh, why, uh, what we are doing here on the surface report here? Yes, sir. Yeah, okay, then click OK. Then after that, uh, we go to in initialization. In this case, we, are, we will not use hybrid, we will use standard 
initialization. Why, right, sir? Yeah, standard. All right. So, um, standard method is recommended for porous media simulation. Yeah, because uh, the default hybrid method, uh, it do not account, uh, it means it do not consider the porous media properties. Uh, especially when it comes to your boundary condition, because just now boundary condition, just now we set up for uh, linear, uh, laminar, and porous uh, condition, right? You still remember okay. in the okay. yeah. So uh, every time you have a porous media, um, mm -hmm. um, it is recommended to use standard initialization. Um, meaning the hybrid can be used for others, but only the porous. Media. Yeah, when it comes to porous, uh, you use standard, because okay. in hybrid it do not. It do not consider the porous behavior. I mean, the porous, uh, uh, yeah, the, the model doesn't work on porous material. Uh, yeah, porous um, um, medium, you can say that, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so if you if you, if you you use the hy uh, hybrid initialization, the mm -hmm. result will be, uh, will be, will be uh, not very logic when it comes to the velocity result later on. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Okay. Um. So, under on under what case we can use hybrid when uh under porous media. So um, when you want to use hybrid scenario, we need to use uh, uh maintain. You need to maintain the constant velocity magnitude option. So do you if you roll down if you roll down this uh uh this window here under solution below there. Uh. This window, okay, you roll down a little bit. Uh, roll up, roll up a little bit. Go up. Uh, okay, you you try to click. Don't 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 activate yet, nah. Just click hybrid in an initialization. And see the option. Uh, you click more setting. Uh, okay, so under this uh, hybrid initialization, if you want to use on porous media, you should activating the maintaining constant velocity magnitude. This one. See the last option there. Yeah. So if you want to use hybrid la, next time, right? so means that if you have a porous media and you still want to use hybrid initialization, can, but you must go to uh, uh, this setting, uh, ask the computer to simulate that you're having a constant velocity magnitude in, in throughout your solution. Right? Okay. So yeah, in this case, you just uh, deselect everything and then we use the standard uh, initialization. Yeah, standard. Standard in the situation. All right, then um, there is an option to ask you where should it uh, compute from just now. Uh, roll up on the top there. So it asks you to compute from where, right? Yeah. Just, yeah, so just uh, go to the uh, drop down list, select inlet, you calculate from inlet. <laughs> Yes, sir. Under the standard initialization, there is a compute from. Oh, okay. okay. Ah. So you need to tell the computer compute from where, compute from inlet. Okay, then the rest we just uh, maintain as what you see, unless you have a value from handbook. Then you click initialize. Okay, once you initialize, go and check your console what's happening there. Yeah. They're going to take some time. Okay, so you can see that. Um, does it say any? Uh, normally, they will say that it's done for. Yes, sir. 
No. This. Okay, never mind. Uh, no message come out. Huh? All right. So as long as the then after that you save the case file or export the case file. Yeah, just could use back this name lah, catalytic converter dot uh, cs dot gz lah. All right, then we will run for 100 uh, iteration. You run for 100, yeah? 100 uh, iteration. Um, yeah, then click OK, click run. Then after that, you tell me uh, uh, this solution need how many iteration to reach convergence? Or okay. does, it, does it reach uh, convergence or not? Yeah? Just wait for the ANSYS to run. And it seems that uh, there's an error there. Anyway, you just wait for the iteration. Okay, the calculation is done. I think the calculation is done. Um, yeah, I think you're downloading something, is it? All right. Um, yeah. So from here, um, what can you conclude from from the console information? How how many iteration that you reach uh, converges? Your mic is muted, yeah? If you already have the answer. Uh, 64, sir. All right, good. 
So the answer is 65 after your conversion. So um, since this is the first uh, iteration, so it's more easier you read from the left hand side. Uh, yeah. There's a 65 solution is converged there, right? Yeah. So when it comes to your exam or your assignment, um, you need to print print shot this, uh, this screen uh, mm -hmm. into your answer, right? To say that you reach a uh, convergence at 65. Okay. All right, so after that, uh, look at the graphic there. So you are having, uh, beside the residuals, there is a surface monitor there. Click on the surface monitor. What what, what do you see here? Mass flow rate. Yeah. What tell you that the mass flow rate is uh, convergence? Uh, the uh, down the iteration rate, right? so it's under 65, it's already converged. Meaning, yep. it's a yeah. stop. Yeah. From the graph, from the graph shape, how you know that you 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 reach a convergence? When it's consistently constant. All right, so it means that uh, you see a straight line, uh, then you the 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 parameter that you're monitoring is reaching a constant. So in this case, you are monitoring the mass flow rate in the system. Yeah. All right, then uh, you export or save the case and data file again into the folder. Same name, same name, yeah. Just update the file. Dot tz. So uh, every time you get a uh, uh, convergence scenario, you you already have a data there. So the, the next step is look at the result. So you go to post processing, surface create ISO surface. Surface, create ISO surface. So we're going to create uh, three ISO surface for us to monitor the results. Means we're going to chop chop the 3D model into three plate, and then we're going to see the result in uh, at that particular plate. The first one is that um, you're going to see the uh, surface on Hold on, uh, the, the orientation is a little bit different. Um, okay, um, new surface name, you key in as y equals zero. y equals zero. This is our first surface where the first location is uh, y equals zero. And then um, you you from the surface of constant there, you drop down and choose mesh. You are creating an ISO surface from the mesh and Y coordinate. Y coordinate. Um, and you click compute. So from there, you see there's a maximum minimum value there, meaning your Y coordinate the maximum is 50 mm, the minimum is negative 58 mm. So we will, uh, because we are at y, uh, we, are, we are cutting a location at y equals zero. So we are, we are, we are almost creating one surface at the middle of the object. Can you see that? Because your yes. maximum minimum is 50 and 58. So you are creating somewhere in the middle. Mm -hmm. Right, so uh, then you click create. create. Okay, so we are creating the first uh, uh, mass surface already. All right, so how do you know if you go to the uh, from surface there, there is a, uh, no, not, not that one, uh, the window down there. Uh, roll down a little bit. So do you see uh, Y0 there? Do you see Y0 just now? Go up. Y equals zero just now. No, sir. Where is Y equals zero? But I can see Y coordinate. Okay, you should be seeing. Uh... Just here, we change. Uh, can see also. Okay, you should change to Y. Okay, do you go to Y coordinate eight there? Okay. Click the Y coordinate eight. Okay. Uh, Delete this one. Oh, never mind, never mind. You create another one. You create another one. You go to surface name. 
you put in y equals zero. Mm -hmm. Then uh, click create. Still right. changing, sir. Yeah, but in the window on the right there, do you see the y equals zero come out already? Oh, yeah. Yeah, so the, the name on the right hand side, that actually there's all the ISO surface you have oh, okay. in, the, in, the, in the software. But now you're creating one one new ISO surface, which is at y equals zero. Mm -hmm. okay. All right. So we need to create another two. Uh, so you go to the uh, name there. You need to change it to. Um, so, so this y equals zero just you. Yeah. You already created just now. Okay. The name already there means you already there. Uh, means you already, uh, you already created the next one. Uh, you go to surface con constant mesh and then go to choose Y coordinate. Mesh is correct. We're creating our ISO surface for mesh, which is correct. Then uh, the next one, we're going to choose X direction, X coordinate. And uh, click compute to see what is your X maximum minimum. So your X minimum, uh, minimum is zero. Uh, maximum is 235 mm. All right, so we're going to key in 95 for the ISO value there. 95. So it's almost in the middle also, All right? So just now it's in the left hand side from our origin. Now we look at X axis, the second surface, which is at the middle there. Then go to the surface name there, chain it to uh, X equal 95, so that you know that this is a surface of X 95 mm. Yeah, so all these are in mm, and then you click create. After you click create, you will see the name pop up in the right hand side window there. So you have two ISO. One is at the beginning y uh, y equal zero or X equal to zero. Also can. Um, the next one, the next ISO surface you just created is X equal to 95. We need to create uh, uh, two more, right? Two more. Um, um, the same same setting. Now you change the name to X equal to one three zero, and then go to ISO value change one three zero, and click create. You will create uh, okay. Then create another one for one six five. X equal net one six five. Okay, so you have four ISO surface here. Um, X equal 95, X equal 165, X equal 130 is you chopping, uh, you, are, you are looking at, uh, uh, if you have a 3D, 3D dimension, you are moving the, the, the plane to X equal 95, X equals 165 and 130. Means you are slicing the, the 3D model in X. Uh, direction and another one you are slicing in y direction or y plane there y equals zero yeah so later you will see uh, what is all this mean all right so the next one we're going to create uh, you, you are done for this one and then click close we're going to create a um, surface for the center line of our porous media so you go to post post processing surface create uh, line or rack. Yeah, that one. Then you re, uh, you rename that one to porous center line. The name changed to porous center line. And then um, you go to endpoint. You have x zero and x one. Key in X zero mm, S zero mm there. Key in ninety five. Y zero key in zero, Z zero key in zero. So this is the first coordinate of the endpoint for your line. Uh, you need to change the X one also. X one change to one six five. 165 and then for y1 z1 change to 0 and z0 
Y10, Z10. Okay, then click create. Okay. Uh, all right, uh, you go to the name there, surface name there. Surface name there, okay. Uh, key in one more time for uh, forest center line again. Because uh, we are not sure whether you are working or not, right? All right, just click one more time to read. Click on the create button, so you will create the button for you. Okay, then click close. Click close. Now we're going to display uh, where is the location of our uh, our war zone there, right? So you're going to, after this, you're going to see something appear on in your window on the right there. So go to post processing, uh, graphic mesh. Post processing, graphic mesh. Um, yeah, edit lah. You can click edit lah. All right. So here, um, we're going to disable the edge. Uncheck the edge, the option. Option there, you are having uh, nodes edge face partition on the left. So, uh, deselect edge. We we don't want to see the edge. Uh, and we want to see the face, huh? so only the face is selected. And then after that, um, in the window surface there, uh, we only want to highlight subtract wall and wall. The other you just deselect. Okay, make sure uh, there's, there's nothing selected. Huh? Uh, only the subtract wall and wall is selected. Check the window. Huh? So, all right. So after that, uh, you click display. All right. So uh, you move to move the mesh display to one side. Okay. So this is the the mesh display that you want to see. However, this mesh is in solid color. Uh, we want to dim the light for this three uh, D model. So you just click the close the close button we want you want to adjust the lighting for our display for this uh, 3d model so you go to viewing on the ribbon up there there's a beside post processing there's a viewing viewing display option option yeah so here you need to disable the double baffling uh, and then make sure the light light on is activated in the light attributes there. Yeah? So uh, by default is is there, and uh, yeah, and by default the colored lighting is selected, which is what we want. And then after that, just click apply. Okay, then you close it. Then after that, we set up transparency for our war zone. So again, go to viewing, graphic compose. Grabbing graphic compose. All right. So uh, select the wall and subtract uh, wall. Select the two. So and then uh, click on is that display button there? Eh? Yeah, click the display button. So there's a parameter you can change here. So you know that monitor controlled by RGB, which is red, green, and blue color. So you want to adjust the the, the color button there. Eh? So um, as you can see here, the red, green, blue are at the maximum 225 value. Um, and then you go to transparency, which is the last last uh, row there. Uh, change the value from zero, increase to 70, seven zero. You can drag or you can uh, uh, click the button also can. 
subtract to 70, 70. Needs to increase the transparency. Okay, yep, then click apply. Then close it. Close it. And then uh, this uh, click apply also, this one. Click apply on the screen description on this one. Click apply. Apply. Click apply button. Click close. Close this window. Yep. Okay. So you can see what is happening to the mesh. We are controlling the the, the color or the presentation for our 3D model just now. So what we did just now, we changed the lighting. We changed the, the color of our geometry. Uh, and then we changed the transparency from 0 to 70% transparency. All right, now we're going to display our velocity vector for y equals 0 isosurface. So you go to post-processing, graphic, post-processing, graphic, contour, uh, not contour, vector. We're going to see velocity vector. All right, vector, edit. Okay, open up the, expand your window there. Expand the window, yeah. Okay. All right, so um, we need to enable the mesh. Enable the draw mesh, sorry. Enable the draw mesh option. And in the draw mesh, make sure you are selecting subtract wall and uh, the wall is highlighted there, yeah. So after that, you just click display. After these two are selected, click display and then close this. Then close. Close this uh, mesh display. Then you go to the vector there. Uh, under vector option, you see there's an arrow, scale, skip, right? Change the scale to 5, increase the scale to 5. You want to see a very big arrow. Scale increase to 5. And then select the surface. In the surface there, we look, want to look at y equals 0. Surfaces, go and find y equals 0. Yep. Then after that, click display. Click display and then see what happened in the window on the right hand side. Okay, so uh, you can close the setting for velocity vector window. Focus on the uh, presentation in the graphic there. Try to rotate your object. Try to look at the velocity vector. Rotate your object. This is a ISO surface at y equal zero. It's a it's a flat data. At uh, it's a two D data at y equal zero. Although it seems like um, it's a three D in in the end of the tube there, if you view from the top, yeah, uh, it will seems that it's in it's it's three D, but actually it's a two D. Is a 2D data. Try to zoom in. Can you can you spot any backflow or circulation inside the the catalyst? Can you tell the 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 flowing behavior in the porous porous media? There, what what do you see? What is the velocity vector that you have there? Your mic is mute, eh? Need to on your, your mic if you are. I can see 2.25. What you are saying? 2. I can 2.25. What is 2.25? Green, uh, yellow color. Yeah, okay. So can, well, what happened to the middle of the porous substract there? Can you tell from this? From this result, can you tell what is the behavior of velocity inside porous media there? 
Yeah, what can you see? Yes, okay, that is wrong. Where is your inlet? Okay. Yeah, where is your inlet? Inlet, uh, this is the inlet. Okay, correct. Then you look at the substract uh, region in the middle section there. So what can you tell from here? From the velocity vector there, what, what can you tell from these results? Okay. okay. You want, a, you want a quick one, you just, you, yeah, there's a 3D cube there. You just click the Z direction arrow. Oh, no, uh, sorry, not Z. You should click the Y, <laughs> Y arrow. Yeah, then zoom in. So what, what does the arrow tell you? Okay, uh, the inlet is the inlet is here. So it, the speed here, it's going in about 2.25 velocity per second. I mean meter per second. Mm -hmm. And then once it goes in, it, uh, it does the speed of low, then uh, it's, since it's blue, blue color, Mm -hmm. So it's like uh, changing first, uh, it's getting reduced. Mm -hmm. The velocity is getting reduced. Mm -hmm. So, and then once it reaches to this place, it's getting increased back when okay. it's out there. Mm -hmm. All right. Then, uh, does it a turbulent flow or laminar flow? How, how do you know that you are having a turbulent flow or laminar flow? Okay. Laminar flow. How do you define laminar flow and turbulent flow? You still remember what what equation you use to to? There's one parameter that you used to define laminar and turbulent flow. You still can recall from what what you learned in your fluid mechanics or fluid dynamics. Can you recall Renox number? Have you heard uh, Renox number before? Yes, so it's something yeah. like huge something. Yeah, so under what value is laminar and above what value is turbulent? Okay, okay, okay. You still remember? I, I kind of remember, sir. Laminar flow is more than zero, turbulent flow is less than zero. No. Oh, no. But if, if, lab, if, Renox number more than uh, 2100 or some textbook write 2300 means 2300 uh, then it become uh, then it become turbulence flow already. okay if the your Renox number less than uh, 2010 or 2300 then it become laminar flow so what is the uh, formula for Renox number is the rho vd divided by mu so yeah. if your velocity is is uh, within, if you can calculate that because you are using nitrogen, you have the temperature, you have the uh, you have the medium parameter there. You can calculate mm -hmm. whether the Reynolds number is reaching Reynolds number, uh, the laminar of the building. Okay. So can you see from from the inlet there, from the inlet in between the inlet and the subtract, the, the cone area, the side, there's a two, two side, right? Yeah. Can you tell the direction? What happened to the flow there? Yeah. What can you tell from all these arrows? The direction, what, what does it tell you? It's rotating. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's a, uh, we call it, there's a back flow. There's a recirculation of uh, flow back to the inflow there. Yeah. Okay. So what what does recirculation will 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 will, will affect the velocity? Will affect the velocity. Yeah. Well, what does if you see the 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 flow is flo flowing back, right? Yeah. When it's flowing back, what happened to the velocity vector? What will it affect or uh, when it mix up with the inflow? The velocity reduce or increase? Uh, 
Uh, the rest reduce, sir. Reduce, huh? Okay, so these are the information when you uh, do flow simulation. All right, so uh, these are the uh, velocity vector at y equals zero. Let's see what is the pressure contour at y equal to zero. So how do you, you still remember how to see contour from pressure? Let's say you want to see contour of pressure. How do you uh, do set up? Go to contours. Yeah, okay. Go to edit. Mm. So if you want to project into the window, uh, then you just click uh, new. Lah. Right. So in this case, we just click edit. So in this case, we want to look at fill option and we want to look at y equals zero surface. And then click display. Uh, a little bit weird in your data there. Uh, Maybe something is wrong there. Okay, um, there, there are some settings that is uh, hair wired because if you see the contour, you know it's not the correct one. Okay. Correct. So you need to go to draw mesh. Click the draw mesh again. There's a setting, I think, not properly done. Click the draw mesh again to open up the option. Um, yeah, the subtract wall and wall is selected. Click display, click display inside this one, then click close, and then uh, click display again. Hmm. Okay, something wrong with the data. You should be seeing, uh, you should be seeing like a normal contour, lah, like we did in a previous uh, example. Uh, I just cannot offer. Uh, normally we don't we don't see it just in the mesh display. Uh, okay, you close this one. You close this one, and then uh, let's see what few norm. Everything is, seems fine from here. Okay, uh, never mind, you close this one. You close this one first. All right, you should be seeing some some contour, but this is like a very weird contour. Uh, yeah, if you want to click new also can. Uh, it's the same, but you will project in the window then. It's correct, this all these are correct. I try display as well. Yeah, display, okay, close. That's it. And then, uh, this one you click surface y equals zero, then click uh, display, save and display. Hmm. You activate the contour line and see what? Yeah, you can click on one. Click the contour line, activate contour line on the option there. You save now. Uh, uncheck the fill and then see what you see. Sorry, sir. Uncheck the, the option, uh, the fill option. The fill option, uncheck it. Then uh, see what happens. See you same, eh? mm -hmm. Something wrong, eh? Uh, but anyway, the step is there, right? The step is there. Um, you still remember just now there is an error in the in your calculation just now. Okay. You, you still remember? Uh, you click Which? close, you click close, close. Okay. you go to console, go to console, console, console. Roll up a little bit, there's a red color warning just now. Roll up, okay, 
Roll up, roll up. Up, up, up. There. There's one red color line just now. Yeah, that one. All right. So there's uh, one error there. So I'm not sure whether this one contributed to your result or not. Yeah. So you should be seeing a uh, uh, normal contour. Never mind. Let's see. Uh, let's go to another um, steps and see what whether is still projecting the same. Let's see x y plot for the pressure for the center line of the porous. Uh, post processing plots uh, x y plot. And uh, yeah, you can click edit, uh, edit or new, so also same. All right, then you go to select the uh, pressure, static pressure, which is correct. Um, select the surface uh, for porous center line. Porous center line. This one that you set, porous center line, yeah. And then click more. Then go to graphic, to graphic. Okay, so this is the static pressure. As you can see, if you drag your solution XY plot window, you can close it. Okay. So you can see here, this is a static pressure from position uh, 90 to 170. Yeah, the pressure, you can see that the static pressure dropping. Uh, when it enter into the uh, subtract, you see yeah. the, the pressure drop. Yeah. Yeah. So this is how you check the the, the porous center line. The next one you look at uh, velocity contour. Let's check one more time for all the porous uh, for all the ISO surface. Click uh, post processing uh, graphic contour edit, and then this time. Uh, we select the global global length range. You select. Want to see velocity? Select velocity. Uh, contour of velocity. Then uh, in the option there, we don't want to use global range. Uh, then uh, uh, in the surface there, we want to look at the three isosurface X. Highlight the three. X one three zero one six five uh ninety five. Deselect y equals to zero. Uh, check again. Everything looks fine. Click display. Okay, something wrong in your calculation. Yeah, but anyway, I uh, click close. You click close. All right. Um. Yeah, the step is correct. It's only yeah, I'm not sure. Maybe something wrong with the software itself, or uh, everything we do we we did just now is correct. Uh -oh. Yeah. Okay. Another one is that um, later I will show you the the results, right? So okay. you can run one more time later on. Uh, let's look at the numerical report. Uh, numerical report, post processing report. And then surface integral. Surface integral. Okay. Let's look at mass weighted average uh, report type. Mass weighted. Mass weighted average uh, velocity in a few variables. And we look at x velocity. Under velocity magnitude, change to x velocity. X velocity. And then uh, choose uh, X 165 and 95 from the, from the, okay. and then click compute. You will see that there's a number out. Okay, there's no number there. Okay, means something wrong in the calculation. Um, you should have some number come out from the, um, Mesh weighted average uh, number there. All right. Uh, okay, don't worry. Later we will come back to these steps again. Uh, then the next one, we going to you go up to report type. We change to 
free chat minimum. Oh. Uh, integral, yeah. Change the report type to free chat. Uh, free uh, face chat, face chat minimum. And uh, click compute. You, you go to, uh, there's a value, oh, it's good. Uh, then you go to console, you go to console. There's a value come out in the console there. All right, so yeah, so you can see that um, um, from the last last number, uh, minimum uh, surface free chat there is, uh, you have a X zero, uh, not X zero, X, when X, is equal to 165, the velocity at that position is uh, 2.5. And the X is 95 is 1.7, uh, which the value is a little bit odd to me. And if you view the previous data, all the data is zero. So it means something wrong in the calculation. That's why there's no data just now. Makes sense, yeah? All right. Um, okay, let me... Okay, let, let's uh, let's uh, rerun the iteration and then uh, let's see if uh, you close the, this one. Close. Uh, let's rerun our 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 calculation. Uh, maybe, yeah, well, maybe one one hundred again. Click calculate. Uh, click OK and see what is the result. Okay, those uh, viewers, if you view this uh, video, we already done with this uh, exercise. Uh, we just reconfirm the results. Okay, while while you are the computers are calculating, let me share my screen to see what is expected results. Yeah, so I will going to uh, share my screen now, so you can unshare your screen. Eh? Uh, pretty bad. You can uh, see my screen now. Uh, yes, sir. All right. So, oh, no, sir. I have eh? Can okay. you see my screen? Now, right. Now. So uh, if you click the few contour this now, the static pressure, the, the contour that you should see is like what you see on the screen. Something like this. All right. So uh, just now you're seeing some, some lines in the result means uh, something wrong. And then uh, when you click for the velocity contour, you should seeing something like this on the screen. There's a, a three slides of uh, velocity there. And you'll see some color is changing. So you'll see that the velocity actually is slowing down as it go through the substract in the middle there. And if you click the result just now, you should seeing some all these value come out like this. So these are the numerical results that um, you should project it into your report. Huh? So uh, so make sure you go through this example again. All right. Okay, let me stop the recording. <laughs> 